It's the Murphy's Law Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this Wednesday. Let's try it one more time. Hey guys, welcome. It's Wednesday. We're at the halfway point of the halfway week of distance learning. You got to be excited about that. Let's jump right into the agenda. Agenda review. So hopefully you're continuing to read chapter three. If you didn't get a chance to read chapter three yesterday, as, as you'll notice, as the week progresses, there are tasks to complete. So the tasks will pile up here. Hopefully you were able to kind of get part of it read yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to read it yesterday, make sure you jump into it today. It is a little bit longer of a read. So you'll want to make sure that you give yourself a little time to go through the, uh, the reading. And if you look at the audio recording, it is about an hour, uh, but there's a lot of information. Chapter three is a very full chapter. So you're going to want to make sure you, you take advantage of that. Hopefully you were able to post your parlay initial theme discussion response yesterday. You're going to uh, want to jump in now today and just respond to somebody else, just like a conversation. Just we're talking about themes. We're talking about what's happening in, of mice and men. So just jump in and continue that conversation, continue that dialogue as you see things develop in a mice and men, because we can't be together to talk about it. So we got to talk about it digitally in a digital conversation. So make sure you're, you're taking care of that today, tomorrow, and Friday will be the final responses there. Uh, today we are going to read a poem. It's a short poem. It's called To a Mouse. And it's actually where the title comes from. So during Melody Monday, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, we, we had an allusion to the title of Mice and Men in the song by Switchfoot. So now uh, we're going to learn where that actual title came from. And it's a poem by Robert Burns called To a Mouse. And so by Friday, I want you to read it. Now, you only have to read the modern version. You don't have to read the Brits, the Scots version. All right. Only the modern version. So you can look at the Scots version and look at the differences in language and that kind of thing. It's kind of interesting. But other, uh, for our purposes, only the modern version. So let's take a look at student responses. Response-a-rama. Had you guys take a look at Switchfoot and the lyrics in the song Meant to Live refers to the novel of Mice and Men. It's an illusion. And so a lot of people kind of picked up on that idea of second chances. Reagan said the illusion means that the men in the book uh, get a second chance to work in the Salinas Valley. So pretty insightful from Reagan. Uh, Dakota also added that it means that whether you're a mouse or a man, you always get second opportunities. There's a second chance. So don't get down on yourself. That's a good point as well. So some good responses there. And it, um, as we continue to talk about Of Mice and Men here and, and look at some of the developments of the characters, you should notice now yesterday that characterization chart was sent back to you. So, and it was added into week this week's assignments, but it's not due until next week. And we're adding in the characteristics, the traits of other characters other than George and Lenny. And we learned a lot about George and Lenny, but we're going to learn about other characters too and how they interact with George and Lenny. And Lenny is kind of a unique character. And I think, you know what? We're getting a phone call. Let's, let's see who it is. Guest appearance. Well, look who it is. It's Miss Lestico from Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? I am hanging in there. How's uh, quarantine treating you? Uh, it is not fun. It's cold. <laughs> I hear it's cold up there. So we yeah. don't experience that here. <laughs> Although it did rain a little bit. Which oh, nice. you poor thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, we appreciate you calling in. Because my students get tired of listening to me. Well, and they should. <laughs> and so, what? Uh, so we're reading a mice and men, and we're great starting. Book. We've only just started. Oh, it is a great book. It is. We've only just started. Uh, so they're starting to learn a little bit about George and Lenny, and um, we're through chapter two, which is where like other people are getting introduced to George and Lenny and their relationship, mm -hmm. and they're starting to see kind of Lenny is a little bit different. And so, and my students understand that Lenny has a little bit of a uh, developmental disability at the time, but they also didn't have like the science and, and research behind uh, mental and de developmental disabilities. So what do you know, or can you share about that history? Um, 
Well, like you said, it was the Great Depression. So um, every yeah, doctors had no real information about disabilities and um, what was causing them. But in most cases during that time, um, if a child was born with a disability, they were often taken from their family, right, from birth, um, put in an institution. Like how do you, how have you seen it kind of evolve in maybe in education specifically? Like a lot of things didn't actually start changing until like the 1970s. Um, so that's only like what, I'm not good with math. <laughs> Like 50 years ago? 50? Yeah, sure. We'll say 50. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So like 50 years ago, it was still more of a hide anyone with a disability. Now, a lot of the times you wouldn't even know if your friend or your classmate has a disability um, because of the science of it and because of the early interventions of, you know, getting help or getting skills early. In life because the the book kind of deals with the the stigma um, you know people kind of question Lenny's ability and um, do you still see kind of is there a stigma you know when it comes to uh, developmental disabilities I mean do people still kind of approach it with that mentality sometimes oh oh completely yeah yeah it's still a very big misconception that if you can't speak the same way as everyone else then you can't, you know, do a job like everyone else, or you can't go to school like everyone else. And do you find, like, so in the book, you know, George tries to explain it away. He's like, well, maybe you got kicked by the horse, or, you know, or he's like, um, he starts to think even Lenny could get better. Like, hey, maybe you're getting better. You know, like, do you see people being like, well, there's got to be an explanation, you know, or they're like trying to like make, make sense of it in their own brain? Yep. A lot of people they're not happy until they find a label to put on it. Um, so, you know, there are some people whose disabilities just don't fit a criteria or a category and, and they don't ever have that perfect label, but um, scientists and, and parents and teachers, they all are keep trying to put this label on them um, so that they can, I don't know, get some special magical treatment that doesn't exist without this label. So what if, if you had to give, you know, advice to people, because you're pretty smart, what, uh, what, what would you share? The thing I kind of preach, I teach a class called peer to peer and it's about this exact thing um, is like, be a friend. Everybody wants a friend. Everyone wants a human connection. Um, you don't have to go on a date with someone, but you can say hi to them in the hall. You can say, um, you send them a Snapchat. Oftentimes these are kids who don't have a lot of friends and just having that one or two people in their lives that are the same age can, you know, really change their whole life. You get something out of it too. You get a friend, you get someone who, you know, likes you for who you are. You don't have to be wearing the right color or have your hair the right way. They don't care. They're your friend. That's awesome. And I think my students will be able to make a connection between that and the novel as well. Excellent. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, that was great, Ms. Elastigo. Uh, special education extraordinaire. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Man. We'll, that was uh, awesome. We'll that Ms. Elastigo, special education teacher Dakota extraordinaire, accent. was able to hey, chime in here and shed some insight into how people with developmental disabilities were treated during the Great Depression and how, you know, that has even evolved and maybe not evolved entirely the way we wanted to, to today. So maybe some of that information that she shared could be used in your parlay comments and discussions. That would be a good place to put information like that. Uh, and as you guys are continuing your characterization chart, maybe some of those conversations, some of that interactions that people have with Lenny can be a part of how you identify some different traits for those characters. Finally, let's see what Word Out Wednesday has in store. Word Out Wednesday. Word Out Wednesday is pretty simple here. We're talking about communication and the importance of communicating with each other. And now we're going to communicate with pictures. So what you're going to do is you're going to provide me with something that stands out to you from the book so far, whether you're through chapter two, you've read through chapter three, you started chapter four, wherever you're at in the reading for this week, you're going to provide me with just an emoji picture 
this like summary of whatever stands out to you in your brain. Now to get emojis here in your Wednesday response, you hit command control space bar and it brings up a variety of different emojis. So you just put in whatever images you're sharing a summary in images. So you just give me all the pictures that you want and then you do have to provide, it says you do have to provide a quick little explanation here. Give me a sentence or two that explains, just in case your pictures don't do it justice, I need a little bit of an explanation of what you're trying to say in pictures. So just provide, you know, these images refer to what? So that's your Word Out Wednesday response for this Wednesday. That's all for this Murphy's Law podcast. Make sure you're jumping into Parlay, continuing that conversation, finish chapter three, and read the Burns poem for the end of the week. Catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs>